In mountainous regions of northern India, the terrain and isolation keep many villages in the dark. Power lines are difficult to erect, and it's too expensive to build regional oil or coal-burning power stations. That means a lot of people simply go without electricity. But since the 1990s, rural India has looked to solar power as an alternative. And, just like New Mexico, local people are taking the lead. At this training center, young men and women learn basic skills about electricity and solar energy. When they finish their studies, these so-called barefoot engineers travel to remote Indian villages to install solar-generated electricity systems. Twenty-year-old Rekker came to the school in 1998 and now teaches others. She grew up in a village without electricity and knows firsthand how difficult that can be. My dream is to introduce electricity into India's poorest homes. If there are solar panels, children can study after dark and housework is easier. Life in general is far more comfortable with electricity. Today, Rekha and her team are headed for Singadi, a mountain village with a population of several hundred. To make a living, the people here herd sheep and spin yarn. Like many other villages in this region, Simgadi is not connected to the national grid. The mountains are too steep to build power lines. Life has been pretty much the same for generations. And when the sun sets, villages have to spin yarn by the light of oil lamps. Many complain of problems with their eyesight from working in the dim light. Villagers eagerly anticipate the prospect of solar power and the chance to improve the local economy. One family asked Rekker to set up a solar unit that will charge a battery so they can have lights at night. The system can produce 40 watts of electricity. That's not much, but it's enough to enjoy three hours of electric light and black and white television each day. A solar system like this costs around 300 US dollars. That's about half the annual earnings of any man in the village. A big price tag, even with low interest loans. This system is being installed at the house of Bharat Singh. He'll share the system with his own family of five and several other families who are dependent on him. He has dreamed for years of having a solar generator. Bharat has spent the past two years working to save enough money for this system but still needed a long-term loan to cover the total cost. But he says it's worth the price, because now his wife can spin yarn and his children can study without damaging their eyesight. Simgadi's first solar experiment gathers a crowd of curious neighbors. The men of the village want to know how and when they might get electricity from solar panels. <laughs> I'd like to install solar panels for my mother, because her eyes are very bad. <laughs> if only I had the money, I'd want them too. While Bharat helps install the last battery, Rekha is busy inside putting in wire for the lights. She's been installing electricity systems like this one for more than 18 months. And before nightfall, she will have the house wired for three electric lamps. Finally, the wiring is complete. And something most of us take for granted, turning on an electric light is done with a sense of awe. <laughs> to a family in a remote village that has never had electricity, a simple 9-watt fluorescent tube is a big leap forward. Yeah, 
Solar power can be used anywhere. It's really convenient. I'd like to install electricity for the whole village. On the first day of solar powered lighting in Bharat's house, the family weaves yarn until 10 o'clock at night and the children read books and finish their homework. We don't have any amusements or information here, so we can't find out anything about the outside world. But if we have a television, information about the world will come to us. At the beginning of the 21st century, there are still 2 billion people around the world without electricity. But solar programs like this one in Simgadi may help close the power gap for the developing world.